Mark, uh, how did Marcus look today given his travel schedule? And was there any concern that everything he did last week might take something out of him? Uh, no, there were, I mean, there wasn't, uh, I wouldn't say any level of concern. I think he, he was probably more excited than anybody to just be back in his native habitat, you know, be out on the football field and do, do what he loves best being with his teammates. And, and, uh, like, you know, like we said last week, great, great distractions. Right side, AJ. Coach, obviously you've got a few weeks until the game. Uh, when do you start implementing the game plan for Florida state? We have a little bit in the last couple of days, and basically today um, and, and yesterday we kind of did, um, in in football terms, kind of a long, a glorified long Monday. Got a, a, a little bit more work than we would with the the threes and, and the assorted young guys uh, yesterday and today. Tomorrow is going to be a total uh, game plan focused mental day. Uh, we're not going to do anything physically, but we're going to have meetings, walkthroughs, all, all that kind of stuff. Do some, do some logistical things, whether it's, you know, just all the things that go along with the bowl, cred, you know, credentials and all that, all that kind of jazz, all that exciting stuff. Um, and then from there, it will be basically game week here, uh, four days off for Christmas game week, plus really two bonus days down there and, and, uh, ramp up to, to game time. Front right, Dad. Mark, not to get too introspective, but are there ways that uh, you have um, evolved as a head coach uh, during this season or certain things that you've um, uh, been able to implement personally um, as you've gone along here and, you know, in your time here? I think we've evolved as a program, you know, and that's probably more important than, than any one individual. Uh, you know, we all, all, we all want to change for the better that to then by virtue, make the program better. Uh, I think our, our performance team, our, our medical people, our, our strength and conditioning coaches, our sports science people have done a fantastic job this year of, of managing a bunch of things, thinking long-term. Um, and, and, you know, again, hopefully if I'm doing something a second time, I'm doing it better as well. Right here, James, quick. Kind of along those lines, it, it seems like the seminal moment of the season was that practice after the Arizona loss. Pun or no pun intended? <laughs> the seminal moment. <laughs> different, different. Ah, I spelling. see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and you've talked about how it was important that the kids came and didn't point fingers and all that. But I'm wondering, what was that process like for you before that practice from the end of the Arizona game? Because Certainly from the outside, you got a lot of criticism and a lot of eyes were on you. What process did you go through to get you to that practice where you addressed the team? Um, you know, I think we addressed it immediately after the game in the, in the locker room, just in, in terms of, of what are we going to do now? You know, and, and it wasn't um, anything. I, I, I don't know. Maybe ask the players. I don't remember anything too, too extravagant. Uh, I think I think you know we believe so much in what we're doing. There's a, a bounce here, a play here, a play there that, that doesn't go your way, and you you lose to a, a top five, top ten team. You know that that happens. Um, but I think the the biggest thing of all is is like you said, not only the, the players not pointing fingers, but a lot of times, you know, in, in football, it's it, the coach you know says, hey, Jason, you should have done this, you should have done this. You know, and that that the, that never happened. You know, it's it's we we need to do this, we need to do that, and and I think across the board in every phase, our 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 program is a program. We're a team, and that's 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 important. You know, when we're, when we've gone through some of the things we've gone through. One of the things they did, the players did say that resonated was you getting up and taking ownership and saying, "Hey, I could do this better, or I could have done that better." Was that was that just your style, or was that? Um, I don't remember meditating over it or premeditating it. I, I think, yeah, I think in general, I, I, I firmly believe that, that, you know, bad stuff belongs to the coaches and the good stuff is, is because of the players and the assistants and that, that, that will never change. And that, that's, that's, I think that's just how, um, I'm wired and, and that that's because it's true. You know, we, we have to coach them. You know, people say execution on the players, actually, you know, you know, you got to coach it. You got to coach every phase of it. And, and then if those guys think it's because of them, then they're going to be better, you know, down, down the road and everybody benefits. But, um, I, I, yeah, I, you know, like, like I've said before, you don't want to really find out how great you are coming back from that stuff, but our, our guys handled it. Great. Are you Steven in the second row? Mark, how would you describe the personality of the senior class? 
the personality of the senior class. Um, I, this is a great, you know, it, it's funny in, 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 when you're on a team and you're in it, in a team, you know, like, like you're kind of in the deal in the fold right now, you don't really think of seniors and, you know, it's just kind of everybody, everybody's it's the, it's, it's the 2014, you know, group, it's the 2015 group. Uh, but certainly there's, there's a, a bunch of very special guys for, for very different reasons, you know, guys that, that have, have taught me a ton guys that hopefully we've, we've given them something that, that has made their life better. I, I know that's taken place, you know, in, in whatever realm academically in their position rooms, uh, in, in the football phase, all those things, um, that, that, you know, there's a lot of special guys that, that will, you know, never forget. Absolutely. Um, personality. I don't know. Let me, let me think about that one for couple minutes I'll, I'll i'll get back i'll get back to you front left right mark could you give an update on pharaoh will he be back next semester and is there a chance he could be with the team during this game at all um that's all to be determined and and literally to be determined um there's a couple different long-term scenarios that we're gonna just see how it plays out obviously we'd love to have him have him back as soon as possible. And if that was in the best interest of everybody, then we'd do it. Um, he did a great job of finishing up academically. Um, and, you know, so far so good relative to everything else. Front right, Dan, right here. Mark, do you know Gary Anderson at all? And, and what was your impression of, of his uh, move to Oregon State? Um, I, I don't know him great. I know of him. You know, we've, we've met before and he's had a ton of success. Um, but yeah, I, nothing, nothing is shocking and surprising anymore, whether it's hirings, firings, moves, uh, either suspected or unexpected. Um, but no, I, you know, he's a, he's a great coach. Right side, Tyson. This obviously varies probably by a case by case basis, but, uh, <laughs> with like, when you have junior college guys coming into the program, what sort of transition do you see usually from them from like their first year to the second year? Um, I'm kind of talking like Joe Walker. Joe Walker, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it absolutely. You hit it right on the head of the first part. It's total, total case by case. You know, uh, you, you saw a kid like Kyle Long comes in and has a little bit more experience maybe than Joe in, in, in whether it's baseball or otherwise and, and comes in and about midway through the season, the guys, you know, ends up being obviously a first round pick. Um, and some guys, it's just maybe their mindset when they first show up and kind of feel their way through things. And uh, but Joe's been Joe's always been one of those guys, you, you know, just being around him, you root for him and, and you, you want a guy like that. Sometimes he's he's a great, great guy, really fun guy to be around. And, and you, you just want him to, to come out of a shell in every way on the field. He's always played hard. He just kind of, you know fitting where he's supposed to be every time and doing all those things all the time. Uh, but, but, uh, it, it, it just absolutely depends on many, many factors. Second row middle right here. <coughs> Maybe you've already done this mark, but I've, I've not heard of it. Can you sort of give me a scattering report a little bit on Florida state about, uh, <laughs> you know, playing and disrupting their offense, disrupting their quarterback, you know, then defensively, what are some of the things they try to do relative to what you've seen, and then the third thing is, are you going to try to keep the kicker off the field? <laughs> yeah, well, hopefully, hopefully not field kicking goals. PATs. Yeah, or field goals. Uh, I mean, there. When you get to this point, you're you're playing an exceptional team, and they're they're they are absolutely that. They are very talented. Uh, uh, you know, they're they're long, athletic, physical, defensively. They're they're you know. You know, I'm trying to think of a comparison, a kind of a combination of Michigan State, of Stanford, of, of you know, Arizona. They, they, they do a bunch of stuff up front. They're very multiple. Um, they, they do uh, a lot in terms of, a, uh, you know, they can, they can base out of a four down front and play, you know, kind of that package. They can base out of a, a three man front with a bunch of different blitz combinations. And they, they have uh, th them and Stanford are probably the most varied uh, from a coverage standpoint that, that, that we see. Um, but yeah, I mean, and then, you know, whether it's the corners or the back, I mean, they're just freakishly athletic. Uh, Goldman obviously is kind of the guy that gets most of the headlines up front, but they, they've got about seven guys that play a ton that, that make a bunch of plays, uh, of it, uh, you know, offensively, obviously Winston gets, gets the gets the pub and deservedly so, but then they've got, you know, two tailbacks and three wide outs and Nick O'Leary is a phenomenal player. Uh, and then, you know, a couple all, all American offensive linemen. So other than that, you know, just kind of your normal garden variety, number one team. Front, Jason, quick. 
Mark, I think nationally, most people, when they hear spread offense, think of passing. But you guys just led the conference in rushing for the ninth consecutive season. What is it or what's different about your guys' approach to running in the spread offense? I think I think yeah I think that's one of those terms kind of like West Coast offense you know West Coast offense was invented by guys in Ohio so where's that I'm not sure where that coast is but uh, the there's a bunch of different bunch of different styles of quote unquote spread there's the the old run and shoot days I think became known as the spread and then whether it's Mike Leach or you know some other uh, derivative of that you know maybe the modern day. Uh, you know, spread version of that. And then there's a ton of teams that 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 run the ball effectively out of a out of a spread deal. Whether it's um, uh, Ohio State or you know the Florida teams with Tim Tebow, that that was definitely a style of spread. And Mississippi State does that some. Baylor, uh, you know, and then everywhere in between. Um, but we, you know, our our whole deal, like everybody that does it, is we're trying to get our athlete in in space against their athlete and try to win. Don't make me regret this, Peach. <laughs> I want to take you back to the Civil War. Um, tell me what was going through your mind when you saw your starting quarterback hurdle a defensive player. Um, I didn't really see that until after the game, so I, nothing went through my mind. Like, like some people would say is about normal, nothing going through my mind. But in um, terms of as a coach, do you in, like to see that? Was it a dangerous thing? You just, I don't, we just don't think that way. I mean, you can try to coach guys up to, to again, manage contact and slide and all those kind of things, but you can't, you can't hope every single play that your, you know, name of the position doesn't get hurt or, you know, you, you'll die of an ulcer. So you didn't see it at all? I, I saw it kind of occur, but I didn't really see, I saw the, the pictures afterward, which were, were cool, but I didn't, you know, I didn't see the right, you're awesome. actual deal. Mark, probably not top of mind for you right now, but your alma mater plays for the NAIA Second national mind, title. Absolutely. Um, what What do you think about when you think back on your time at Southern Oregon? I threw a lot of picks and had a lot of fun. No, had a had a great experience. Um, it's a great great place. You know, Ashland's a great place. Southern Oregon's a great school. Um, and yeah, it's, it's phenomenal that the job that coach Howard's done and Matt Sayer, the, the athletic director, there's a, a friend of mine, very good friend of mine. And, and it's, it's been really cool to follow those guys. So Friday, Friday afternoon will be, uh, definitely, definitely recorded. Try to, try to see it. We have some, uh, some meetings scheduled for that time. Some jerks scheduled those meetings. So we might have to work around them. How did your time there influence you in terms of wanting to become a coach? Did it at all? Oh yeah, I'm sure on on some level, absolutely. There are a bunch of you know a bunch of coaches that you play for that you're you're influenced by in in different ways, um, and and but again, just nothing but nothing but good memories uh, of those days. Tyson, do you see anything different in the way that Winston's played this year compared to last year, or maybe uh, teams are defending him differently? Because I mean, if you just on on a it's 100 stats level it's not nearly as impressive as it was here before mm -hmm. uh, when you look at like interception to touchdown ratio um that's one thing you never really know of of comparing um yes i mean his, his stats are different um early game production is different um but when you you know we don't have the luxury of knowing okay um whoever Clemson played them this way last year and this way the year before. And now it's, you know, that much different or, uh, leading up to that game, you know, how they, how they defended people. And a lot of times against a team like Florida state and their, their talent, they're going to do something a little bit different or, uh, just they're, they're, those guys are going to have their, their best. I've said this many times, those guys are going to get every single team's best shot. They're going to have their best week of preparation. They're going to have their most, you know, most dialed in sense of urgency in meetings, everything about that week when you're trying to, to knock off number one and undefeated and 29 straight people are, are dialed into that. And, you know, I think it, I think that's, you know, it's been that much more impressive to how they've been able to come back. And, and usually it's, it's him making a couple plays down the stretch, uh, you know, whether again, the whiteouts or O'Leary or whoever that, that, that he finds in, ex, you know, extraordinary fashion. We're going to go two more then we're going to go to the phone. Paul. Hey, Mark. Left side. Um, I'm curious how often, if at all, you, the staff, maybe the players have said the words national championship this year. Do you talk about that in the preseason at all or at any point since you use those words or dis discuss that at all? Uh, the first, the first meeting of the, of the season, uh, first day, um, and then I would wager your paycheck on probably never since then. That's 
not that much, so you're good. Um, <laughs> uh, do you think that's because there's just maybe there's an assumption now at Oregon that Oregon football is is in always in the chase for national championships? There's no reason to even discuss it or say it because this is now the place where the program has become that every year you'll compete for. Um. I don't know if it's necessarily because of that. I think you, you, you know, you state your goals, you talk about your goals and then you forget them, you know, and you just dive into the process. You'd be 100% invested in the process. And then that other part down way down there has a chance of happening. You know, if we just sit around and talk about winning the lottery, we're going to be spending a lot of money on, you know, burnt tickets. But if we, you know, go to work and, and, and have a possibility of making that happen, it might. AJ on the right. Coach, you mentioned earlier, obviously, very talented on both sides of the ball for Florida State. Um, how do you equate the talent level that you've seen all year in the Pac-12 versus what you expect to see in the Rose Bowl? That's a great question. You know, that, that's one of those things it's, that you, you watch film, and uh, we had a couple. Uh, Stanford played Notre Dame. Uh, a couple of the teams played Notre Dame. So you do kind of that cross. Okay, these teams, they kind of look like this against these guys and kind of look like these against these guys. But they're, they're extremely talented. I mean, it's Florida State. You know, I mean, th those guys are uh, in in a hotbed of, of recruiting talent and, and have done a phenomenal job of recruiting for a long, long time. Uh, their speed and athleticism uh, jumps right out at you on offense and defense and, and even more so in special teams. You know, they, they do they put their guys in a, in a great position to 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 be athletes. You know, they 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 kind of simplify things, especially on special teams. And, and I think, again, that's a giant compliment to be able to do something simple and just say, hey, you know, we're better than you and, and we're going to outplay you and out athlete you, out physically you, whatever, whatever the case may be. On the phone, Tim. Yes, Mark, Tim Trower with the Mail Tribune. Yes. Down here in Medford. How much have you uh, followed SOU this fall or been able to? I've I've followed them every single every single week checking checking the score. I did not get a chance to watch the the snow game before our our game, but I saw a couple pictures and a few highlights. But uh, yeah, I'm always always checking on my Marshall Pirates and my and my my Raiders. Were you surprised by any of the results? Uh, uh, in particular, the semifinals got a little out of hand. Yeah, that, I mean that was amazing. I, I heard the score and what was it sixty two thirty seven or something like that sixty two. Right, it? right, and. Uh, I mean that a, a drubbing at that you know at that point of the of the playoffs is is very impressive. What kind of interaction, Mark, do you have with Craig Howard, if any, uh, you know, particularly from a football standpoint? Um, we've we've met a couple times. Yeah, they, their their staff came up to a game. Can't remember which one this this season during their bye week, and and we got together with those guys a couple times in the off season, uh, you know, very very briefly. Unfortunately, uh, he's got a great a great staff and a great group of guys that have that have won a lot, you know, won a lot of games in a bunch of different places. What do you know about Austin Dodge? He uh, he's got one or two of your records, I, I think. But uh... <laughs> yeah, I think he passed those a long time ago. <laughs> Um, I, yeah, we, we, we didn't throw it quite this much or maybe I didn't, we didn't win enough games to, to get that far, but no, he, he's, uh, I actually talked to, I, I haven't, again, I haven't seen him this year, but, uh, I've talked to a couple of, of NFL scouts that, that have mentioned him as a, as a potential guy down the road. And, and anytime you're, you're doing that at that level, it's, it's impressive. We had the, the good fortune or the misfortune to play against John Kitna when he was at Central Washington, you know, a guy that, that obviously did a lot of things at the next level. So it's it's possible and wish him nothing but the best. Right. Now, Mark, what was your highlight as a player for the Raiders? <laughs> you said it right. I think there was one highlight. Um, I don't know. My Our teammates had an un unbelie unbelievable group of guys that, that uh, have still stayed in contact with and, and even some uh, – Beaver fans that I think we've we've uh, turned. Okay, all right, uh, Mark. I think that's it for me. I appreciate your time. Sure. One more here. One more. Dan. <laughs> you want twenty minutes? Mark, I just wanted to ask a, a recruiting question. How do you? What is your process, and what is the criteria for evaluating kickers? <laughs> uh, we've had a bunch of guys in our camp uh at, at various times um there's are you saying us or in general in, yeah um uh, yeah we we try to to see everybody you know that the, the negative about uh kickers in particular is you, you don't get to put them uh <laughs> excuse me i got a little funk going on here uh you don't get to put them 
in the you know game ending situation a bunch all those kind of things uh the pressure cooker as much as you might like to um but we've had had you know we've had the guys in our in our camp almost without exception um or or they've been here as a as a walk on and evaluated them that way is it the toughest position to evaluate or um some people say that you know some people say that just in terms of it's it's you know it's like a golfer almost, you know, it's so mental in terms of, of the preparation. you never know how much or when, or if you're going to be involved. And, and when you are, it's, it's really important. And, and so that's, that's one of those things that that position probably more so than any other. Um, although we do a bunch of that stuff with our other guys too, it's, it's mental psychological development as well as, you know, kick it through the yellow Y.